Okay, it is preparing you for the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? Because we'll begin to work on them one by one. And I just want to make uh, Pastor Goluan know that I'm not changing topic. I'm staying at the topic. Hallelujah. He, he has been asking questions whether I can stay at my topic for until I finish it. I will finish it this time. I'm teaching on the gifts, the Holy Spirit and his gifts. But this time I just want to share on the Lord revealed to me that the kingdom of God is part of the gift. Understanding the kingdom of God is also part of the message on the gifts of the Spirit. There are so many people who are not here today, they will miss this because God has come to visit us. Say with me, God has come to visit us. Amen? I believe none of us here will ever be the same. To God be the glory. If you are in church today, you have come for an encounter with God. You have come to meet the living God and you will never live the same for the presence of God will touch you. In Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15, it says, Are you there? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom of God. Say with me, the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God. Amen? And you know, in verse 15, it says, let's go to verse 15. And let's read together. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the, in the gospel. Repent and do what? And believe in the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is where? Is at hand. Say with me, is at hand. He was saying the kingdom of God is right here. Because the one who was standing there, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the embodiment of the Godhead. In Jesus Christ, Christ dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Father, Son, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit manifesting through the Son. You get it? He is the embodiment of Godhead. So when he said, the kingdom is at hand, he was saying, I am at hand. You get it? He was saying, God is at hand. When he says, the kingdom is here, he is saying, I am here. Because he is, I am whom I am. The I am is saying, I have come, I am right here in your midst, I am right here with you. And when he is there, everything changes. When God is there, everything changes. Father, we thank you. Bless this offering and die and offering, use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. When he is there, everything changes. Say with me, everything changes. His very presence changes everything. Because he is all miraculous. The kingdom of God is a supernatural kingdom. And we see it in Matthew chapter 10, 7 to 8. Because the kingdom of God is a supernatural kingdom. I want you to listen carefully today. Because people of God, if you get the spirit of what I'm sharing today, you will move in the miraculous. Amen? The kingdom of God is a supernatural kingdom. Say with me, supernatural kingdom. Once you enter the kingdom of God, once you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, you have entered into a supernatural life. Let's go to Matthew. Are you there? Chapter 7. Matthew 10, sorry, 10 verse 7 to 8. Matthew 10 verse 7 to 8. It says what? As you, let's read together. One, two, three, go. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You should say what? It's at hand. In Mark chapter 1, Jesus was announcing the kingdom of heaven is at hand, isn't it? He was saying, I am at hand. As I told you, he was saying, I am, because he is the kingdom of heaven. He is the embodiment of his kingdom. Amen? That's why the scripture is very clear that unto us a child, unto us a son is given. Amen. And what happened? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. 
the government it means that he himself is his government you get it he himself is the embodiment of government uh, upon him the government shall be where upon him so his very presence execute the government of god the very presence of jesus so he is the embodiment of god's government amen so that's why when you say in the name of jesus you are establishing the reign and the government of god his very presence is god's government and he said and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and of the increase of his government there shall be no end another version says and to the increase of his kingdom there shall be no end so his kingdom is established forever he himself is the embodiment of god's government listen carefully God's government is supernatural. It means when God says a thing, it happens as he says it. Because, listen, God is not a miracle walking God. He is a miracle God. There is a difference. He does not do, he does not just do miracles. He is he's very being is miraculous you got it yeah. amen so everything about him is a miracle when he created you it was a miracle he breathed into dust you and dust became man everything about you is miraculous your very breath is a miracle doctors cannot understand how you are breathing how you are living it cannot be understood your very life is a miracle. Everything about you is miraculous. If you look at the things you make, it's all miraculous. The brain that God has given you shows the miracle of God. Everything within you is a miracle. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am a miracle. Shout it, I am a miracle. Don't do that. Shout it, I am a miracle. Say it, I am a miracle. Hallelujah. I'm a miracle. Say, I am a miracle. I move in the miraculous. I walk in the miraculous. Everything I do is a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. A monitor, please. Don't be changing it up and down. Just leave it as it is. I can control my voice myself. Sometimes I can go up. It doesn't mean that I'll stay that way. Amen. So you can bear it with your ears for a little bit. I'll come down. Don't worry. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand. He's a miracle God. When he does anything, he does it miraculously. And I want you to see it because the God who is a miracle God said, as you go preach, saying, put it back as it was, please. As you go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It says what? The kingdom of heaven is where? Listen carefully. He was saying as you go. He did not say as I am. He said as you go. Why? Because the disciples were carrying Jesus the kingdom of heaven. He knew that wherever they go the kingdom goes with them. The one who has Jesus does not go alone to Walmart. Once he enters Walmart, the, the atmosphere changes. The kingdom of heaven has invaded Walmart. And everything changes. Your very presence carries the kingdom of heaven wherever you go. That's why he told the disciple, as you go, Take away the echo. As you go, you should do what? Preach, saying what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he was saying, I am at hand. The miraculous one is at hand. The one who does wonders is, is at hand. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And then he told them in verse 8, what did he say? He said something powerful. Let's go verse 8. He says what? Heal the sick. Cleanse the leopard. Raise the dead. 
cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Hallelujah. What have you received? You know what you have received. What did you receive? You received who? Jesus. And who is Jesus? The kingdom of heaven. He is God's king. And he manifests as the king of kings. So wherever he goes, the kingdom goes with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he is not telling you to pray for the sick. I'm sorry, he didn't say pray for the sick. What did he say? Heal the sick. There is a difference in praying for, for the sick and healing the sick. When you pray for the sick, you are asking God to do it. When he tells you heal the sick, he's telling you to do it. And understanding the difference of this will make you move from the natural to the supernatural. Because God has entrusted so much inside of you. You are a wonder. A child of God is a wonder. My dear, you don't seem excited as I'm excited. A child of God is what? A wonder. You are a walking miracle. Wherever you go, God goes with you. Impossible. Bow at your feet because God is with you. And where God is, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he said, heal the sick. I repeat, there is a difference between praying for the sick and healing the sick. The church has concentrated in praying for the sick. That's why we see less result. We have disobeyed this simple command to heal the sick. God does not ask you to do something he has not empowered you to do. Else it will be fake or false. Else it is a, a contradiction to his integrity. He does not ask you to do something he has not empowered you to do. What did he say? Heal the sick. How do we cleanse the leopard, cast out demons? How do we cast out demons? You many of you have seen me casting out demons. How do I do it? Do I come and say, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, come, Lord, and deliver my beloved wife from any demon in Jesus' name. Oh, release God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Show up from heaven. And deliver high, I pray in Jesus' name. No, no, no. We got it right when it comes to casting out demons. Why? Because I, I will say, in the name of Jesus, I, not Jesus, not a father or son, I command you to come out. Why? Because in casting out demons, I have recognized my authority. Why have we not recognized our authority when he says, you heal the sick? He says, you heal the sick. But in casting out demons, you know your authority. You know he told you to do it and you are doing it right. But when it comes to healing the sick, we shrink. We immediately say, it is the Lord's. Is the Lord who may heal or may not heal. <laughs> so therefore, Lord, who just develop a type of holiness, type of funny thing, fake humility, and who just become humble. I'm not the healer. It's the Lord. <laughs> but when it comes to deliverance, we don't say you are the deliverer. You know it's the power of God that is delivering. But you have been in charge you have been charged you have been commanded to do it why because it's not you who do it is the power the one who lives inside of you who is casting out that demon the one who lives inside of you who is healing the person but god wants you to take charge in the old covenant you pray for the sick in the new covenant the kingdom has come to you Things have changed. In the old covenant, you pray for the sick. In the new covenant, the kingdom has come to you and is right here. 
And Jesus told the disciples, he said, the kingdom of God is where? Is where? Is where? Is at hand. And then he says, the kingdom is within you. That's what Jesus said. The kingdom is where? Within you. So wherever you go, you learn. You carry the kingdom. You carry the kingdom. Hallelujah. And in that kingdom, no one disobey the king. Demons bow to the king. Sickness bow to the king. Every disease submit to the king. It is the kingdom. Say with me the kingdom. Shout with me the kingdom of God is within me. It's within me. I have good news for you people. You are not a normal human being. You are no more a normal woman. If they say you are abnormal, you are strange, say yes, I am. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed. Everything has become new. You are a new creation. It means made in heaven, created in heaven. You are not a normal human being. You are full of God. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and say, I am full of God. Shouted, I am full of God. Say, I am full of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he said, heal the sick. Heal the sick. But he first said, the kingdom of heaven is what? It's at hand. He was telling them, say it. Why? Because there is the power in the saying. Yes. He says, say it. Because he knows once you say it, you believe it. That's why the Bible says, if thou shalt say unto this mountain. Thou shalt say what? Unto this mountain. Be thou removed. So the speaking is so important. But the problem with believers is that they believe and they don't speak. But true faith as it is spoken in Hebrew says, I believe and I have spoken. Both go together. You must speak it out. If you want to move in the miraculous, you cannot close your mouth. You must learn to speak to yourself. You must learn to proclaim what God says. You must learn to proclaim it as part of you. You must take, take possession of the things of God. Because in the, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the violence take it by force. You cannot just come to the kingdom of God and think that it will fall on your shoulder by chance. It is the violence who take it by force. You must understand the mystery of God. Every spiritual riches must be taken by force. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when Jesus says, say it, he knew what he was saying. You say it before you possess it. You do what? Say it before you possess it. The moment you sense strange thing around your environment, you speak out. Speak out and say, Satan, I refuse your presence here. Don't just say, God understands me. Even if I'm quiet. No, 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 no. Never stand before Goliath with your mouth closed. Because you are facing someone who is speaking in the spirit. Do you know the devil speaks? Constantly. When he speaks to you, don't stay quiet. Amen? Once you stay quiet, you are accepting what he said. You may think you have not accepted it, but you will soon be affected by what you have heard. You must learn to speak. Tell your neighbor, you must learn to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once you declare the kingdom is at hand, you are saying the reign of God has begun. Wow. Raise your hands and worship the king of glory. And the kingdom of God is a miracle kingdom. Miracles are natural to God. Amen. Everything is by miracle. Our prayers are answered by miracles. You know, I met somebody who told me, I don't believe in miracles. I said, then do you believe in prayers? A pastor. So I don't believe that miracles ended in the days of the apostles. You heard those messages before? Strange discussion. Strange doctrine. 
You don't believe in miracles. Do you believe in answer to prayer? So why not? How can prayer be answered? It's by miracle. You are inviting, uh, you are inviting divine help into physical realm. It's a miracle. Amen. You are asking heaven to intervene on earth. It's all a miracle. It does not happen by by natural laws. It happens by spiritual laws. It's all miraculous. If you say you don't believe in miracle, then you don't believe in a living God. If you say you don't believe in miracle, then you don't even believe in salvation. Because the greatest miracle is salvation. For somebody who is saved, it's a miracle. Separated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God is the greatest miracle of all. Hallelujah. So anyone who says he does not believe in miracle is deceiving himself. Because God is a miracle God. You can't believe in God and you don't believe in miracles. He is a miracle God. I want you to live from here today with one thing clear. You are a miracle person. As long as you have God in you, you are a miracle being. Impossible bow to the God who is inside of you. No matter what you are going through, I have good news for you. It shall bow in the name of Jesus. Because you live in the miraculous. You move in the miraculous. Because the word of God says was, in him we live and have our being. It is from him flows miracles. It is from him flows wonders. But understand that he uses, he can only flow through you. If you get that, and you know God is longing to magnify his name, you will become a source to bless many people. Hallelujah. Raise the answer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. So, people of God, say with me, God is a miracle. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle God. Amen? If you understand that, then I want you to know one thing. Many of you, if there is a word, just understand me. Don't, don't attack this theology that I want to say. Mm? But many of us, we have Jesus in us, not doing what he is men or supposed to do. He is a miracle God. And we have put him in the natural. And we have made sure he stayed in the natural. We have not known that he is there to bring impossible to possible. He is there to make you not to be like the people of the world who are limited by natural limits. A child of God has no limit. You are a supernatural being. The God who is in you is a big God. He's a miracle God. Shout it with me. He's a miracle God. Say it with me. He's a miracle God. And I want you to get this. Don't keep Jesus in a cage. He is the God of hosts. He is the mighty king of glory. He is the king of glory. As the scripture says clearly. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, the Lord of hosts, the Lord mighty in battle. He is ready for war. Release the lion of the tribe of Judah that is inside of you, and you will see what the lion can do. Release him out of your life. Stop caging the lion. Hallelujah. Once you release him, things begin to happen. Miracles begin to happen. Shout with me, say, miracles begin happening. When the lion is released. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That's why the word of God says the kingdom of God is not in words only. 1 Corinthians 4, 19 and 20. And I want you to see these people of God because this will help you. Amen? Father, I pray for revelation. That your children 
will get a revelation and will become uncomfortable with a religion of words. And know that Christianity is not a religion. It is God at work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read together. It says what? Verse 19. One, two, three, go. Shortly. If the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. Listen. Why? Because words puff up. Knowledge puff up. Have you not noticed that somebody who is well landed without Christ is full of himself? <laughs> without Jesus, a, a, land, a landed person, you find them all over. <laughs> find them in Congress. Find them all over the place. Find them in courts. They act like gods. Without Jesus, a landed person. Because knowledge pops. Knowledge does what? Pops. That's why the more you read, the more you study the word, the more you read Christian religion, the more you build yourself, be very careful. You will soon start feeling as though you are up there. <laughs> I'm serious. You may soon start feeling as though you are, you are studying, getting revelations, you feel that you are the man of God of the hour. You are the <laughs> It's true. Knowledge pops up. When you're hearing somebody preaching, you will say, I can do that better even. <laughs> so I'm saying, be very careful with knowledge. Read, study, build yourself, but don't depend on it. Why? Because knowledge alone is not enough. And this is the Christianity that has destroyed the world today. A Christianity of knowledge without power. It's a deadly form of Christianity. That's why Paul said, not the word of those who are puffed off, but the power. But what? Say with me, the power. In verse 20, the Bible says this. Let's go to verse 20. For, let's read together. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The kingdom of God is not what? In word. Father, forgive us for the fact that we have preached word. We have concentrated on words. We have proclaimed words only. We have spoken words only. The kingdom of God is not in words but in power. Children of God, I want to challenge you today. Your Christianity is not sufficient if it does not release power. If power does not come out of your Christianity, then you have failed the Lord. The kingdom of God is not words only. It is the power of God. If mountains don't collapse, something is wrong. If mountains don't collapse, something is wrong. If battles, if impossible don't become possible, something is wrong. I pray in the name of Jesus that you become uncomfortable with the Christianity of words only. I didn't write it. The Bible says it. Yeah, the kingdom of God is not in word. Why have we concentrated on word? We go to church to hear a good sermon. No, that is not enough. God wants you to become men and women of power who change the course of history. God wants you to become men and women of who? Of power. I beg you in the name of Jesus, my dear Fanel, don't be satisfied with words. It does not fit the New Testament Christianity was made to change circumstances, was made to bring God into action, was made so that men see the power of the great God. It is the manifestation of the Most High God. That's why he said, I am whom I am. May God deliver us from how we have destroyed Christianity. We have made Christianity words. If I come here and preach some good sermons, people are happy now. It's not enough. God must move. Things must change. Life must change. Good sermon alone does not do it. Remember an incident where I was going to minister. At Mercy's Book Mennonite Church. You know, I was there. They gave me five days to preach. And I said to myself, what's it, five or six days? Was it almost a whole week? Okay. So we went there, and they told me, have the whole, preach anything God leads you to preach. 
I prepared my five powerful messages. Make sure that I did not, nothing about healing, nothing about deliverance, nothing about anything that will bring controversy. Because I knew their doctrine. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit. So, I first preached my wonderful sermon on prayer. Importance of prayer. And it was, everybody was enjoying it. I was enjoying my thing. I was so much glorifying God. And I was ready to go to my hotel room. And then I heard the voice of the Lord. My wife was me. The, voice, the Lord spoke to me. I didn't bring you here to preach good sermons. I said, I said, Lord, you saw the fire that was in there today. It was wonderful. These people were happy with my message. <laughs> they were so happy. He said, I didn't bring you here to preach good sermons. I brought you here to change lives. To release my power. So as I, as I was struck, I said, Lord, these people will drive me in two days. If I dare talk on healing or deliverance, I am finished. I am preaching. I started teaching God. I said, Lord, I'm preaching at their level. <laughs> you know how people can try to teach God? To make us know better than God. So as I was arguing with God in my mind as we were driving to the hotel, my wife turned to me and said, I want to tell you something. I said, yes. He said, my beloved wife, I'm a beloved husband. I hope you didn't come here to preach some good sermons. I hope you will release the power of God in this place. I'm telling you, my car almost went to the bush. <laughs> I, I turned like this. I had to look behind. Is Jesus standing, sitting there speaking to her? I, it was frightful. I'm telling you, I trembled. This it was a spiritual experience, a, a spiritual experience that shocked me. I said, my God, the Holy Spirit and my wife have been gossiping against me. <laughs> so, I went to the hotel room. I said, darling, do you know that question you just asked? You know why I was trembling? God was speaking to me since I preached my message. It is as though God was not happy. I was happy with my message. Eh? <laughs> I like it myself. But the Lord was not happy. The Lord was telling me he didn't send me here to preach good sermons. Set people free. The next day I came, I said, I want to plead the fit amendment. You know about the fit amendment? <laughs> so don't blame me. Blame the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father, including my wife. <laughs> I said, this is what God told me. I am changing all my messages and preaching on deliverance and healing. And I started preaching. People of God, it is historic. God did wonders there. In the midst of my preaching, demons began manifesting. People will be shouting in the hall. Demons will be going like snakes on the floor. It was unusual. And as we were casting out the demons, they were coming out. Demon. People were being delivered. Hundreds, sometimes at once. Falling all over the place. It was full of youths. So the youths were, many of them demonized with the spirit. Demonic uh, spirit of Michael Jackson. All this music. R. Kelly. Those music that you listen to that demonic. Those secular music is not neutral. It's not neutral. Um, Beyonce. Music. Demons of Beyonce was coming out of people like nothing else. People were being delivered. Demons were coming out. And it was so serious that one person, one man ran and turned off my microphone. That's how bad the, the demons manifest. He ran and turned off. I was struggling. I said, it was so serious deliverance like you were in the hall here and because they have speakers in the bathrooms and it goes through the whole place demons were manifesting in the children's room in the bathroom everywhere as the sound was going everywhere people were being delivered and so this guy was so upset went and just like we can't stand this anymore because 
The children's school could not take place. In the children's school, demons started manifesting in the children. They were being delivered right there. The power of God distorted all their program. So she, they wanted to have the children's school without me disturbing. Those demons are coming out. So, he, so you could see how man, when God is moving, he wants to bring himself back into place. The power of God was flowing and manifesting in a majestic way. And let me tell you, people of God, those people will never, will they have never been the same. In the midst of it, you know what happened? In the midst of it, you know what happened? The Lord began baptizing them in the Holy Spirit without me doing it. About 40 of them began praying in tongues. I did not pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The this is a church that does not believe in the Holy Spirit. The pastor could not believe what he was seeing. I told the pastor, I did not do it. Did I pray and lead people to, to pray in tongues? No. This, the Holy Ghost just took over. Blamed, he, he blamed the Father if he want to. The Holy Ghost took over. People were baptized in the Holy Spirit. The whole hall, I heard the whole hall. Karabaka, dorabaka, darabaka, shanda, darabaka. I saw some of the old schools, old prophets walking out of the building. That what is happening here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God took over. People were healed. They took, they took three days, three Sundays with three different cities to share the testimonies. Cancer. That's where Pastor Jim, the wife, was healed of stage four cancer. You know Sister Helena, who became a member of us, was healed. The moment she was coming and the word of knowledge was manifesting so strong, I was coming. I said, who curse you? And I started commanding the demons to come out of her. And there's some yellow stuff. It was cancer. That was coming out. I didn't know. It's later that she told me when she went to the doctor and she was cancer free. The power of God. God was moving. God was moving. God was moving in a special way. And I had prepared to preach my good sermon, my dear brother Mark. I'm telling you, my good sermon. What if I disobeyed God? You see how we men of God have hindered the purposes of God? If I was too afraid, because one thing which God has blessed me with, and God has blessed me a lot, is courage. Fear is not one of my weakness. <laughs> so, but on that day, I was struggling. <laughs> Even though it's not one of my weakness, it became one of my little weakness that day. When you know people don't believe in what you are preaching, you, you are tempted to change your message. That's the truth. You are tempted to change your message because every preacher wants to be loved. You don't want to come and cause trouble and go. <laughs> From that day, I was never invited back. The Lord told me, preach not to be invited. Don't, be invi don't preach to be invited. Preach to change the course of history. Many of those used today are pastors. Some of them are preaching the gospel all over the place. Many of them. Do you know one thing? They could not survive in that church. Because they were so suppressed and they were asked to stop praying in tongues that many of them left. So that's why they, were, that's why they have never invited me back. <laughs> the presence of the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he changes things. The gospel is not just word. The kingdom of God is not word, but it is in power. Say with me, in power. Shout it in power. Say the kingdom of God is not words. It is in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we give you the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the loss of power today, it is the greatest tragedy to the church of God. It is what? The greatest tragedy. The loss of spiritual power is the greatest tra tragedy to the church of the Most High God. And I come to tell you, God will begin to restore that power right here in this place. If you came today, you came for an encounter with God. 
and it's a change of paradigm. God is going to change because it is your belief system. As the Lord changes your belief system, he will empower you to do miracles because you are a miracle worker. Say with me, I am a miracle worker. Amen. You must identify yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ in this context. Because the Bible says what? He who is joined to Christ is what? Is one spirit with him. Listen carefully. Is what? One spirit. It means you are one spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. He heals the sick. You heal the sick. He casts out demons. You cast out demons. It means that you walk like him. One spirit means one action. You, he, what he does, you do. People of God, you have the ability of Christ inside of you. And I pray for my, the young people of this generation to understand, don't follow the fake religion of your forefathers. Christianity today, let me tell you, if it is not in power, will do nothing to modern man. Modern man has heard enough. They, uh, they, they watch TV. They watch everything. They see everything. No, 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 no. What would change their mind is when they see God walking through you. When they see God moving through you. What will make the difference is not good doctrine. It's not good what, 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 what. It's not good teaching. No, 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 no. It is the power of God. It is what? The power of God. It is not... The power of God is not a choice. It's a must. It's not something you may have or must or may not have. It is a must. It is a must in your life. It's a must in the life of your children. When your children are filled with demonic doctrine in schools, how do you get them out if you don't have power? Because once they listen to their teachers, they believe their teachers. To people of God. God is a great God. Shout with me, God is a great God. Say, so God is a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why in explaining the spiritual gifts, people of God, the Bible says what? But the demonstration of the Spirit is given for the profit of all. The what? The demonstration. Underline that word. To demonstrate something is to act it out. The demonstration of the Spirit is given for the profit of all. The Holy Spirit is not given for you to feel good. It's given for demonstration. You must demonstrate God wherever you go. That that touch your neighbor everywhere. Everywhere. See, this is it's not for you. It's not for you to speak only. You, it's not for you just to feel good. The spirit was given for demonstration. The demonstration of the spirit is given for the profit of all. You know when I went to India, one day as I was, as I was ministering, I was taken to my hotel room and they put me at the top of the hotel. And uh, God was arranging it for a purpose. And I was looking outside. I'm telling you. I was in a huge city in India. And that city is about 10 to 15 million people. And as I looked outside, most of the streets of India, especially around that area where I was looking, did not have a lot of cars. Cars cannot pass there. Just human beings. It was like a sea of human beings. I looked on the left human. I looked, the place was full to the brim. And I looked at them. And then I heard the voice of the Lord. To look at a dying world and have no power to save them is worth not living. When I looked at the Indian people and my heart was moved, I vowed from that day I will not leave a Christianity without power anymore. Your heart will be moved when you see the crowd, when you see the people. People of God, children of the Most High God, we need the power of God as a must. It's not a choice in the last day. It's a must. 
There is no way we can make history without the power of God. And I want to say something today, which I will say it more, because I want to conclude this today. I feel in my spirit that I want to conclude this so that we can pray. But children of God, I'm begging you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything around us is looking for the miraculous. Hallelujah. Say with me, everything is looking for the miraculous. Because if you see what Jesus said, Jesus said, if I do not do the works, believe me not. Even Jesus challenged the people not to believe him if miracles don't happen. That's what Jesus said. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. He was saying, how can we now go to the world and tell the world, even if I don't do the works, they believe me. We say we follow Jesus. He said, if I do not do the works of my father, believe me not. He was challenging them that if, me, if miracles don't happen, if the lame don't walk, if the blind don't see, if the dead don't raise, please don't believe me. Oh, may God get the church back to the level where we can tell the world, if you don't see the signs, don't believe. We can challenge them because God is backing us with signs so much that we'll say, if you don't see the sign, don't believe what I'm saying. The gospel was to be demonstrated as the word of God say, this sign shall follow them that believe. The sign must follow you. It is not okay if the signs don't follow. It is abnormal Christianity. It is pseudo Christianity. Real Christianity goes with signs and wonders. It's not okay that you just go around and nothing happens. It's not okay that even at your home nothing happens. No, let your children see signs and wonders. Let everything around you see signs and wonders. When you pray, things happen. Let your parents see signs and wonders. Let your loved ones see signs and wonders. Let the people at your job see signs and wonders. Let them come to you with a need and you say, Thus says the Lord. The Lord is saying this. Hey, we were made to provide need for man we were made as answers to God's people as answer to this world you are the light of the world without you the earth is in darkness you are the salt of the earth you are to provide answers where there are no answers may the light of God shine through you so that men will see and glorify your father who is in heaven it's not okay to just be normal so I'm pleading with you in the name of Jesus. The time to be normal is over. The time to be normal is over. This is the time to become an abnormal person. Wherever you go, things happen. Miracles follow you. When you say, move, things move. Because the power of God is over your life. You are not a normal person. I want each one of you to hear it. You are not normal. As long as you have Jesus, you are a supernatural being. You are a new creation. Everything around you carries God. You are not normal anymore. Don't accept the status quo. Don't accept to be normal. Christ, true Christianity is demonstration of God's power. Let them begin to see it and let them know that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, they will know that Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Shout it, they will know that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You must stand wherever you go. You must stand well, Walmart to a miracle place. When you see somebody sick or lame or walking, just go there and heal the sick. Rabaka, Rabaka, a man in California starts a revival wherever he goes. This brother, he just goes, he sees somebody with short legs walking. He says, sit down right there. People, he don't care whether people are looking. The person will sit down and be looking at him. He says, I want your leg to grow now. He will hold the leg there. Command it to grow in Jesus' name. Sometimes it is instant. Sometimes it takes 10, 15, 30 minutes. He stays there. He doesn't stop. He will stay there until the leg grow. When it grow, people will begin to shout. 
a crowd will gather and he will preach the gospel. For many of us, when you pray for about two minutes, it doesn't happen. You say, the Lord, the Lord has spoken that it's not your day today. I'll pray for you tomorrow. He said he takes no, he doesn't take no for an answer. He said, God did not, God meant business when he told us go and heal the sick. I am here to heal the sick, not to pray for the sick. There is a difference there. To heal the sick, he will insist until it happened. And when it happened, he has his revival right there. Everybody is ready to listen to him at that time. Hallelujah. Many people have been saved because of that. So I have good news, people of God. The time, the time for words alone for this church is over. Next month, next month, get ready. Next month is the month of miracles. It's the month of encounters. Monitors. The month of encounters. The month of encounters. Say with me, of encounters. Encounters with God. October is a, is a visitation month. It's the month of encounter. It begins from next week. Encounters with the Most High God. Next Sunday will be in October, isn't it? Come ready. Because a new day has come. Raise your hands to the Lord and say glory be to God. Glory be to God. Say glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say this to you people of God. You remember when the Lord spoke to Moses. You know when Herod, when Pharaoh decided to do horrible things, torment the Jews. And he decided, when Moses came and said, the Lord says, let my people go. What did Pharaoh do? He doubled their labor. He did what? Why? Let me say this to you. The devil has not changed. You know, the Pharaoh of that day represented Lucifer. He represented the devil. Because it is the devil will keep God's people in captive. You get it? Everything in scripture is symbolic. It was a representation of Lucifer. That's why if you notice, during the time God was manifesting his power in Egypt, he said, over the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. He was not executing judgment just on Pharaoh, but over what? The gods of Egypt. Because Pharaoh represented those gods. Over the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. So you could see the power of God manifesting as judgment to the gods of Egypt. And the Lord said something powerful. When Moses told him, open your Bible with me, please. Go to Exodus chapter 6. From verse 1 and 2. When Moses, when the Jews were forced and God did wonders for them but this is what i want i want you to say every time god is ready to deliver you satan has a strategy he increases your bondage when you are close to victory satan makes sure so you don't see the victory you see your bondage he makes sure that your bondage is what you see he makes sure that he increases the pain of your bondage so that you don't see the delivering hand of the most high God. So let me tell you, when your bondage seems to increase, it is the time for the devil to go. When your bondage seems to increase, it is time for Lucifer to pack his bagago and leave. It's time for the enemy to walk away. Don't get discouraged when your bondage seems to increase. Oh, I don't think, I don't care whether it is finances. I don't care when deliverance is coming for your finances. That is when you lose your job. But the problem is that many of us miss it. When deliverance is coming for your finances, that is when you lose your job. That is when you start asking, Lord, how will I feed my family? Because deliverance is coming. Why? Satan shows his ugly head when you are close to victory. 
For 400 years, the Jews were under torment. When God showed up, Satan doubled the torment. He doubled the torment immediately to make them see their torment, not the victory of God. I want you to see how God is walking because that is how God works. When the power of God is moving, that is when Satan says, let me make sure he misses it by increasing his torment so that he will see his torment and he will not notice that I am moving in his life. But I have good news for you. In such moment, then listen. Listen to what the Lord said. And I want us to read it together. Let's read together. Whether you are standing up or sitting down, let's say it. It says what? Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. I want to announce to you now you shall see what God will do to your tormentor now you shall see what God will do to the one who is holding you in bondage now you will see what God will do to the one who has increased your torment. Remember he said, see. Why? Because they were seeing something else. They were seeing what? Bondage. They were seeing what? Trouble. They were seeing what? Double bondage. But he said, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. And when God speaks that you will see, don't mess with the great Jehovah. He will do wonders. And he says, let's read it. He says what? For... For with a strong hand, he will let them go. Hallelujah. I have good news for you. With a strong hand, the enemy will let you go. With a strong hand, the enemy will let you go. With a strong hand, that finances that you are afraid of, God is opening doors to bless you in another way. Hallelujah. The more you are close to victory, the more Satan tries to increase the bondage. You start hearing bad news. Doctors start telling you some very bad news. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, there is another news. You will see what God will do. Hallelujah. With a strong hand, he will let them go. And now he says what? And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Listen carefully. You will not only be let go. He will, he will drive you very fast. You know, it comes a time when it is not enough for Satan to let you go. He drives you very bad. <laughs> he said, Michel Mulet, you have to, your master has tormented me very much. Please go, go, go. He will drive you. He will drive you. Hallelujah. Say, was, begin raise your hands and worship the Lord and bless the Lord and give him the glory. We worship you, Lord. We honor you in Jesus' name. Then in verse 2. We shall conclude here in verse 2. And God, no, no, verse 2 and verse 3, sorry. It says, well, and God said what? And God spoke to Moses, said to him, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. He did not say, there is another Lord. He said, I am the Lord. He was saying, I am the only Lord. Now, let's go ahead. Verse 3. This is the place that touched me. He said, I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. 
But my name, no, no. Put King James, put King James. They have changed it. <laughs> my name, Lord. My name, Lord. Because Jehovah carries another name. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. He was saying, Jehovah means the sovereign Lord. It means unchallenged monarch, unchallenged king. He was saying, who is Egypt to challenge me? I am God Almighty, known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But today, I am coming with another name. Rakaroko Shoroko Robaka. I am coming with another name. And that name is Jehovah. Raka Shoroko Riboko. So he's saying, Go and tell Pharaoh, I'm not just the God Almighty, I am Jehovah. And I will show you that I am Jehovah, the sovereign Lord. The one who has no equal, who has no rival. And the one who is unchallenged. Try to challenge him and he will show you that he is the Lord. And this is the time when the name Jehovah raised your hands like this and shouted. Shouted. Say, Jehovah, I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sovereign one is alive. The rock of ages is alive. He is greater than all. He is mightier than all. And let me tell you something that will surprise you. Something that will surprise you. When God steps in, it is to be feared. You will read what he did to Pharaoh. My God. He showed that man. Even after the Jews have left, the judgment was not over. He told Pharaoh, he told Moses, go on and come near this place close to the sea. And I will move Pharaoh to come and pursue you. You know, when it is time, the enemy is saying, let me come and pursue Freddy. Or let me come and pursue you. God is saying, I have moved him to come. I have moved him to come. Most often we see just the devil. We don't understand that they were moved to come so that God may show his name as Jehovah. That's why during this corona time, God is showing himself as Jehovah. That's why this place is called what? The Corona Free Zone. In the midst of Corona, Jesus is Lord. And listen carefully. He said, but my name, Jehovah, was not known to them. I have good news for you. When God calls his name himself. Remember when Moses asked him, when I go and ask them, what, they, they ask me, what is your name? What will you say? What do I say? His name is so big that he just said, I am whom I am. It means I cannot be described with words. I'm too big for words. I am whom I am. If I ask you, tell me your name, you tell me that. <laughs> I am whom I am. But this time, God said, tell them, my new name is Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the sovereign lord he does not fight with anyone when he shows up the king has shown up order is maintained there is no anarchy when he shows up anyone who stands on his way is finished and that is what happened he made sure and that nation was judged all the firstborn died god dealt with that nation horribly they were on all type of plagues tenth of them all type of plague but the last two all the firstborn died and when they died the bible says the the israel the, the, uh, the pharaoh and his people the egyptians were pleading with them to leave driving them in haste get out they say or oh, else we are all dead people when they got out and they said what have we done to let them go they gather all their might to follow them and as they came god showed himself mighty the bible says on one side of the egyptian was darkness and on the other side was light how god does that i don't understand it even my head cannot grasp it that's why he is jehovah on the side of your enemy i want to tell you there shall be darkness but on your side there shall be light hallelujah the bible says i will make a difference between the israelites and the egyptians god is making a difference between you and the people of this world and all the egyptians and all the powers of the enemy you are unique to god and god has a great plan for your life raise your hands and worship him and give him the glory and give him the glory hallelujah hallelujah listen carefully the Bible says, and as they were following the Jews, the Bible says, by the blast of his nostrils. But listen, my wife preached on this the other day, but I want to add something. You remember what the Lord told Moses? The Lord spoke to Moses and said what? Why are you crying to me? Tell the children of Israel to do what? To go forth. And he says, stand up and do what? And divide the sea. He did not tell him, pray that I divide the sea. He told Moses, you divide the sea. Because when God dealt with Moses, he manifested the law and grace together. Grace was manifested. That's why in the names of God, when he appeared to Moses, he said, the Lord, the Lord God, gracious and merciful. So he is the God of grace, even in the old covenant. So that grace was given upon Moses. And he told Moses, you divide the sea. Don't pray to me. This is what he's saying to the church of God. You heal the sick. Don't pray to me. You cast out demons. Don't pray to me. You raise the dead. Don't pray. To Just raise the dead. There is a time for prayer. Do it in your private home. Go for 10 hours. It's great. No matter how long it is wonderful but when you get out in the field you become a commander you command things to existence hallelujah he was telling moses this is not time for intercession this is time to command time for action so divide it the bible says what at the blast of his nostrils the lord just said hmm. At the blast of his nostrils, the Red Sea gave way. The Red Sea did what? Gave way. And the children of Israel walk on dry ground. The Bible did not say wet ground. The Bible calls it dry ground. Not even wetness was allowed to touch them. They walk on dry ground. And something happened. The Egyptians were bold enough to follow. You see uh, the audacity. Do you see the audacity of the evil one? The audacity of the enemy. The enemy is trying to follow somebody like you who carries fire. 
Somebody like you, who is the one, you are the burning ones. The Bible says he has made his servants what? Flames of fire. You are his servant, you carry fire. And the audacity of the enemy to try to follow you, brother. He tries to follow. And the Lord said, after they have entered, the Bible says God looked through the fire. Through the pillar of fire. He looked at them through the cloud. And he decided to do what? Remove their wheels. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. <laughs> the Bible says he removed their wheels. How can you ride in the sand without wheels? They are stuck. There was no way to go front or to go back. And they said, God is fighting for the for the Israelite against us. Let's go back. And the Lord says, Enemy, you are not going back. You have touched the God Jehovah. And Jehovah, the sovereign Lord, will show himself as Lord. And what happened? He told Moses, stretch forth your rod. And let the water come back. God himself could have done it. God himself should, what? could have done what? Could, could have done it. But you know what? God chose to use Moses to do it. God himself wants to heal the sick. But God is choosing you. That's why the Lord said, you do what? Stretch your rod. When Moses stretched it, what happened? The water came back. And you know what happened? The Jew, all the Egyptians and their whole military was drowned. They did not need to fight with the Jews. When God is fighting for you, you don't even have to fight. When God is fighting for you, you don't even have to fight. When God has taken over, it means the battle is over. When God is fighting for you, you don't have to do what? You don't have to fight. Say with me, I don't have to fight. <laughs> because God is fighting for me. Raise your hands and give God the glory and worship the King of glory. But let me close by saying this, people. People of God, this is the good news. That mighty Jehovah is here. And he's moving in your life. He's saying, the enemy that has doubled himself in your life. Don't fight no, anymore with the old knowledge of God that you know. A new name has come. And the great Jehovah has shown up. And the battle is the Lord. The battle is what? Is the Lord. I want you to raise your hands, everyone. Stand up and worship the great God. And tell him, Father, I thank you because... My season is changing. Rabaka do robaka da rabaka shoro koribo ko sharaka robaka roko da rabaka sharaka robaka sharaka robaka. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O God? We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Raise your hands and worship Him. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, who is like unto thee, O Lord, who is like unto thee, O Lord, who is like unto thee. 